This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. For them to get in. Jesus gave his disciples authority over those moving in the iniquity force, authority over those moving in the power and the influence. Oh, I didn't get to read the best part. Are you ready for this? Deutimus also can be the power and resources rising, or wait a minute, the power and influence which belongs to riches and wealth. How many know that there's two places that the Illuminati and the mystery religions draw power of the earth? They draw it from the iniquity force, and in my second book I, I deal with how that they're trying to master that iniquity force. It's the power of magic. That, that, mad, that power source does not come from Lucifer. We're the, we're the batteries stupid enough to yield to sin and to charge up his kingdom. And we begin walking in holiness we turn that power off. You're no longer going to, I'm, I'm no longer going to, you know, the last thing I want when the devil looks at me is to neither see an easy button or a Duracell on the side of me. I don't want to power his kingdom. But I'm moving in a different power that's not compatible with that power. And the other is the influence that comes with wealth and riches. And so when you look at exousia, saying, okay, they, they, have this, they have this power force, but they also control all the money. Jesus just told his disciples, I give you authority, I gave you the on and off switch. Well, that's one the body of Christ needs to learn how to use. And not get caught up in trusting in riches. Oh, that's a whole other teaching. That, that may be a book. Getting it right. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, verses 18 through 20. This is after the resurrection. Now I'm reading from the New King James, which reads a little bit different than the King James. The King James says all power. The Greek word there is exousia which should properly be translated authority, okay? And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Therefore, go out and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things which I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this age." I mean, or so be it. Now, I want to look at another aspect because here it is exousia. We need to see it in light of what Jesus just accomplished. He gave himself as the perfect sacrifice for us. He conquered hell. He rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He now opens up 
to those who believe in him the ability to become a second Adam, a new man. Now with this new man, Jesus didn't say some authority came to me because, you know, some of it within man was lost in the garden. Man was cut off from God. His soul was now under the control of principalities and powers and the iniquity force and everything dark and evil. You need to realize before you got saved, how many know you didn't have to really work on being a sinner? It came naturally. Some of us were very proficient at it, okay? Because that was the, that was, we, we, we basically had no choice but to do that. And that's what he's dealing with here because the number one exousia, the number one meaning is the power of choice and the liberty of doing as one pleases. Now, don't take that out of context. I'm not getting hyper grace. Well, I can just do as I want. Jesus said, now all authority has been given unto me. Now you can really be my disciples. And I've freed you from the iniquity force. I've freed you from the influence of hell. And I'm putting this new nature on the inside of you. And this new nature now has the ability to choose what it wants to do and has the liberty of doing what it wants to do, not what the old man wants to do. Woo! Now that's grace. Oh. We just started to have fun. The more you move in the new man, the more you begin functioning. The, the Apostle Paul tells us if we are led by the Spirit, we're the sons of God. If we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the, the lustful desires of the flesh. The old man, the new man is of the Spirit. We've already dealt with the, that Jesus, that new man, referred to the spiritual. First, the physical came, and now the spiritual has come. And now when I begin functioning in this new man, and I am finally free, the shackles have been broken, and I can choose holiness, I can choose godliness, not to get accepted, but because I have been accepted. The more I function in that, the more that I can begin moving in authority for the will of God to be expressed in the earth. Now here's, here's our quandary in, in this day and this hour, guys. He told us to make disciples of everything that I told you. If I was going to teach everything that came from Jesus, where would I start? Genesis. I would have you to properly be a disciple. You got to have Moses. You got to have the Gospels. You got to have the new man. And you got to be led by the Spirit of God. Unless you have those four components, you're not his disciple. Now, where the rabbis fail, and I'm talking about the rabbis of Jesus' day, not the one to, because I'm, I, I've shared this before, what is called modern rabbinics did not exist in the New Testament time. It has been contaminated with Hindu philosophy and mysticism and, and, and the, the Zoharian doctrines and all these different things, trying to work up what we got in the Holy Ghost. Okay? And then most of us don't even know what we got. <laughs> That's why people like me teach. You got to understand what you have and get that meter stuck off stupid and get it stuck on sanctified. There is, there is benefits to godliness. There's benefits to obedience. 
I'm preaching to me right now. You all just listen to that and just enjoy it, okay? Because I've got to remind myself that. But to truly be a disciple takes those four components. And once you have those four components, you cannot disciple until you are one. Come on, and you can only take folks as far as you are. How many know if you're having a hard time with two plus two, you're not going to be able to teach somebody quantum physics or advanced algebra or trigonometry or quantum algebra if you're having problems with two plus two equals four? You cannot, and this is the thing for the, for, this is the, the good thing for the preachers. If, if he can teach his congregations to the place that they're really starting to grow and, and demand to get out of the nursery and they don't want formula all the time, that is an uh, accelerant for him to grow and go deeper. But if all your congregation will let you do is play in the kiddie pool, sometimes you forget how to swim on the deep end. But as I am discipled by Christ, as I, as I discipline myself and learn the perfect harmony of Torah and Jesus. I mean, and I, I've shared this, but some of these things just need to be re-uttered, reiterated, re-uttered, said over and over and over again. The reason that Jesus' ministry was three and a half years is because the original Torah cycle as given by Moses when he handed it to the Levites and they could only hear the Torah on the three feasts that they assembled for. It took three and a half years to go through the five books of Moses. And it was that way from the day that Moses died at 120 all the way to the establishing of the synagogue in Babylon by Ezra and Nehemiah where they began to meet weekly and they could hear the Torah read and expounded upon every week, and then it was condensed to a one-year cycle. So what this means is Jesus gave Moses the Torah, you know, gave them about a thousand years to really screw it up and misinterpret it and add their own stuff to it. And so it's like, no, 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 you don't get it. Let, let, let me come down and show you. And so when you read the Gospels, you know, the first time we read the Gospels is discovering that we need a Savior and His name is Jesus and what He did for us. And after that's been established, when we go back and read the Gospels again, we start noticing how He conducted Himself. How He constantly sought the Father's will, how he disciplined himself. And Jesus, even when his will, in, in, in Gethsemane, even when his will, because he began to take on our nature that he was going to crucify on the cross, and his want to didn't want to do what the Father wanted him to do. So he went and said three times, is there any way that this cup can pass from me? What did he say after that? Your will be done, not mine. What a powerful statement. When I come to the place that I don't want to do what the Word tells me i got to do. What do I do? Well, let me follow the example of Jesus. But you don't understand what I want to do. I want to do it really bad. Or what I'm trying to avoid, I'm wanting to, I mean, I'm laboring over it, I mean, I'm sweating bullets. Yeah, but he sweated blood and still did it. Perfect example. Torah in motion. And so we have the church looking at the example, but they don't know what it was an example of because we've dismissed the Old Testament. You have some of the Hebrew roots folks that get so caught back up in Moses, they forget to look to the example of Jesus, and now they're looking at the rabbis who had it messed up in his day. They've had 2,000 years to mess it up some more. 
looking to them for insights when you need to go back to the author and look to him who had the true authority that taught it with authority like none of them ever could and his name is Jesus and he makes the Torah come to life. Why? Because he is the living Torah. And as I begin to be disciplined by his life, disciplined by what the Word says, I'm going to say this. You're not a disciple unless you're being disciplined by somebody else's teaching. Now, I could tell you that I know the ins and outs and weightlifting and weight loss and how to get a body in shape, and I am an expert at it. How many know it doesn't look like I've been disciplined? Therefore, I am not, a, I am not disciplined in that area. If I'm not disciplined, I'm not being a disciple in that area. And we can call ourselves disciples of Messiah all day long, but if we don't have the four components... We're lying to ourselves and we're lying to the world around us. But the natural thing for a disciple to do is want to make disciples of others. Jesus changed my life. Understanding the full counsel of God's Word has changed my life. The cross and the blood of Jesus has changed my life. Stop getting stuck on stupid and doing the wrong things and asking God to help and discovering if you do the right things, you're not going to have to cry out for help so much. You know, I realized one day, and that this was years ago, we were talking about, I was uh, with a missionary over in, in Germany, and we were talking about, you know, the, uh, you know, the gifts of the Spirit and divine healing and all these different things. And I said, you know, really, if you're really living the Word of God by the power of the Spirit the way that you really need to, a lot of those things you don't need. Because you never find yourself in a position to need them. But they're embedded with us for those who haven't gotten there yet. Some of them haven't even gotten into the kingdom. And he said, you know, I think you're on to something. Now, it took me another 20 years to fully understand what the Spirit of God had come out my mouth when I was in Germany as a kid. I saw it, but I didn't really see it, but now I see it. And I think any, any minister that's ever moved down the anointing, you say things a lot of times that you're not quite there yet, and the Holy Spirit's trying to say, you got more road to go down to get there. And you begin laboring to get there. We're required by Jesus, by the power of the new man, to teach people how to walk with God, teach them their need for God, why they need Him, why they need a Savior, why they need to be redeemed, what's really working in their lives, they're they're on self-destruct and don't know it. How many know right now when you look at the world, it's on self-destruct? Some of the stuff has just gotten so absurd And then you have Washington pundits or or, or liberal media pundits trying to spin it, saying, well, they're just ahead of their time. Yeah, they're just, they're presenting themselves with 20 nails in the coffin instead of four. Okay, they're just just a little ahead of their time. And you look at this stuff and say, "I, I can't believe that you can say that with a straight face. For those that have ears to hear and those that have eyes to see, we recognize that. That's why the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, not just salvation. Salvation is one component of it, and so many of us have reduced it to just getting saved, set your blessed assurance over there, and shut up and tithe every week, and to support what we're doing, and then then you have a Willy Wonka golden ticket, and you're good to go. That's not the gospel of the kingdom. Disciplining myself. To understand Moses through the lens of Jesus and begin seeing myself do the things that he did. And I'll find I can begin taking the shepherd's staff of the kingdom and moving it in the same authority that Jesus moved in it. He walked up to Peter one day and he said, Peter, man, I'm praying for you. 
Satan wants to sift you like sand or like wheat. He's not going to get it done because I've been praying for you. Man, there was no telling what was going on in Peter's head before he said that. I mean, it already had to be emotion. What an impact you'd have in somebody else's life when they haven't said a word to you and you walk up and say, this is what you're dealing with and God's been having me pray for you. If you yield to Him, you're going to get on the other side. How many know you got their attention? And it's not you getting their attention for you. It's you saying, look up here. I'm going to have to nail down this pulpit this morning. I'm getting kind of wild. Um, That's the way the kingdom is supposed to work. As I'm moving like Jesus, I constantly bring people to the Father. I constantly bring people into the kingdom. I constantly point them toward Him and say, it's not me, it's Him doing the work in me. Because Jesus emptied Himself. No, oh. we're about to have fun. Jesus emptied Himself so the Holy Spirit could fill Him. When we get so full of us, we have no room for Him. You know, it's been said of Moses that Moses spent 40 years thinking he was somebody and then learning another 40 years that he was nobody only to discover what God can do through a nobody. is I take all the garbage and the false doctrines and all the strife that's against the kingdom of God and I take it and I empty it out. I drive it outside my borders. I now have a place for God to fill with the kingdom. That's why prayer and study and all these things are so important because it's driving out the old to make room for the new. so that we can just simply be filled with the Spirit of God. Oh, and to be filled with His love. Love will have you do something, a lot of things your flesh just don't want to do. It'll have, it'll have you do things that shocks yourself sometimes. We need to have that kind of love. We need to have that kind of grace on the inside of us. Because God is wanting to do more. It's time to take our belief system up to a whole nother level. It's time to take our commitment to God to a whole nother level. It's time to take our, our attitudes and to bring them into submission to Christ on a whole new level. And I've got to do it all the time, guys. I'm not telling you that I'm there yet. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like the Apostle Paul. I'm not telling you that I have arrived. I'm just on the way. But even being on the way is a whole much better than being in Lodibar or being, you know, in, in, in the place where the, in the desert place the enemy works. Being on the way, getting the rocks out of our pockets and, getting, and being in that process is so much better than being a slave in Egypt. It's so much better. Because we've got, when we read the book of Revelation, when we read and understand the book of Revelation, Daniel, what the prophets have said, and I believe that unfolding is either right upon us or soon to be unfolding upon us. I see that God expects a lot. That we've got to raise to the hour. That we've got to quit our games, get serious. And the good news I'm trying to share with you today, Jesus, after He rose from the dead, He gave you the authority to say yes to Him. Yes to the kingdom. But not just yes. You have the right to say no to the devil, to our old desires, to our old ways of doing things. We've got to be honest with ourselves. If we're, now that we're a Christian, if we're doing the same stupid things we used to do and expecting different results, who's deceived? There has to be a change. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you can prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. 
That's what God wants for us. That's what heaven wants. Father, we just come before you today humbly. Father, we, we realize this morning that you have given us authority to choose. And Father, right now we say that we choose Jesus. We choose the kingdom of God over the kingdom of darkness. We renounce the kingdom of darkness, any perceived benefit. We renounce anything the enemy tries to have within us, and we plead the blood of Jesus over it. And Father, we, just, we call for the Holy Spirit to come and help sanctify those areas until nothing remains but Jesus. Not for our names, but for the sake of your great name. And so that we can be a generation that our, our hearts are for yours. And that we can be like Jesus in the earth. And that we can make your name famous, revered, and respected among humanity once again, we ask. In Jesus' name. Fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.